five blood sets in New York. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sex money murder, I'm sure y'all heard of it. My brother just came home, you know what I'm saying? They're 10, now he free. DJ made a hot song, but the content that he used is not his content. In the early 1990s, the East Coast prison system was dominated by the Latin Kings and Nettis gangs. African-American inmates who felt oppressed by these dominant gangs decided to create a united front to protect themselves. Two prisoners, Leonard Deadeye McKenzie and Omar O.G. Mac Porty, are credited with forming the alliance that became known as the United Blood Nation in Rikers Island. The UBN was initially created not as a street gang, but as an organization for inmate protection within the prison sit-in. The founders adopted the name Blitz to resonate with a notorious street gang of the same name that had been operating in Los Angeles since the 1970s. However, it's important to note that the East Coast Blitz, UBN, and the West Coast Blitz are distinct entities with different codes, structures, and histories. Once the UBN established itself inside prison, its influence quickly spread to the streets. As members were released, they took the Blitz name, culture, and organization with them, establishing street sets and recruiting new members. Over time, the UBN became deeply involved in criminal activities outside prison, including drug trafficking, robbery, and violent crime. Today, the NY Blood Sets are one of the most notorious and widespread street gangs on the East Coast of the United States. Their influence extends from New York City through various other East Coast cities, and they remain a major player in the world of organized street crime. At number five, we have Sex Money Murder. A, a blood, um, it wasn't real till my man touched it. Peter Rolock. Home of the murder gang, Sex Money Murder, I'm sure y'all heard of it. Once he um, touched it and, 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 and being the, uh, the, uh, his realness, it transcended to the street. It was, it was okay to be a, a blood. I think the first real set that was really out on the streets and really flagging and really going wild with sex, money, and murder. Originating in the Soundview region of the Bronx, New York, the street organization known as Sex Money Murder established its roots. Peter Rollick, also known as Pistol Pete, after a period in Rikers Island where he encountered a UBN leader, OG Mac, aligned the gang with the original sets of the United Blood Nation, UBN. UBN marked the genesis of the Blitz on the East Coast, particularly in New York. The formation of the gang can be credited to Greg Stone, nicknamed Grog, from the Soundview Houses, and Xavier, often referred to as X, from the Bronx River Houses, both of which are public housing developments managed by the NYCHA. The United Blood Nation itself was an alliance born in the confines of Rikers Island, amalgamating various blood sets. Rollock received a life sentence without the possibility of parole and was placed in the Federal Supermax facility in Florence, Colorado. This sentence came after his family was targeted for prosecution. Pete entered a plea bargain for his involvement in the deaths and intent to kill six individuals at the Stevenson Commons complex in Soundview. His plea terms mandated potential indefinite segregation along with unique administrative measures that limit his communication. Even though Rollock has shown exemplary behavior in the Florence facility, efforts to ease these restrictions haven't succeeded as of 2012. Prosecutors remain concerned that any directive from Rollock could be swiftly executed by members of Sex Money Murder. Over time, SMM aligned itself with the United Blood Nation, which rose to prominence in the 1990s. This affiliation led to a rapid expansion of SMM beyond its original territories. While their primary stronghold remains in the Soundview area of the Bronx, their influence has extended into the South Bronx and several Eastern Brooklyn districts such as Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brownsville, Crown Heights, and East New Year. On Long Island, the gang's presence is on the rise, notably in places like Roosevelt, New York, with a smaller footprint in Hempstead, New York. At number four, we have the Nine Tray Blitz. Look at the homies, man. Look to the left of me. Uh -huh. Look to the right of me. Look outside. Look outside. Look outside. Whoa! And we coming to L.A. We get in the morning. For the music shit, we's running around together, doing what we do, you know, painting the town red. You no, know that means and all that. We do banging the beat game. You tell them out. They know blood is progress. You know what I'm saying?
Founded in 1993 within the confines of the Rikers Island Jail Complex in New York City, this gang emerged as the first blood set endorsed by OG Mac. The most recent known leaders include Magoo, a trailblazer as one of the early Hispanic bloods or rarity then, and S.I., who met a tragic end in a standoff with the police at his residence. Their influence stretches from Virginia to New York, North Carolina, Baltimore, and New Jersey. At number 3, we have the 1-8 Trey Gangster Blitz. The 1-8 Trey Gangster Blitz represent a subset of the widespread street gang known as the Blitz. Originating from the Bronx in New York, they stand as one of the foundational sets of the United Blood Nation, a coalition of blood factions birthed within the confines of Rikers Island Correctional Facility in New York. Their influence and operations extend beyond New York, reaching into various other states. At number two, we have the Bloodhound Brims. Yeah, this is your boy, Latique La Brim Johnson. So I'm gonna take a moment to set the record straight for you. I see there's a lot of controversy over this Whoopi thing. So first and foremost, CJ made a hot song, but the content that he used is not his content. So his foundation is based off a of lie. He's not Whoopi. He don't know nothing about Whoopi. He just seen a fly splash and he jacked it. Whoopi wore the signal when we come through you. Who's gonna fix it in here? I'm in jail and I still. Operating primarily within the broader New York region from around 2005 to 2016, the Bloodhound Brims BHB, emerged as a notable faction of the National Blood Street Gang, falling under the umbrella of the New York Blood Brim Army NYBBA. Their influence stretched across various parts of New York, including New York City, Westchester County, Elmira, extending into Pennsylvania, and even penetrated federal and state prison system. The driving force behind BHB was its founder and leader, Latique Johnson aka Labrim, often revered by gang members and associates as the Godfather. Labrim orchestrated the gang's structure, dividing it into distinct pedigrees, each with its tailored leadership hierarchy. At number one, we have the Mac Baller Brims. Hold on, 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 hold on. Inside America, American Towers is my AT. This Banks people's right here. This he came up with. Take on the road. You know what I'm saying? Right now, you know, I went to Brooklyn, did rest in peace. The Mac Baller Brims represent a formidable Bronx-rooted syndicate of drug and arms traffickers. Considered by authorities as the city's most menacing gang, this faction of the National Blitz Gang commands a significant portion of New York's illicit drug market and exerts substantial influence in Rikers Island. There, they oversee the flow of contraband and wield life or death power over inmates, according to police and jail insiders. Established in 2001, the Mac Baller Brims stand out as the most influential among the Brim subsets in New York. Their growth and cloud have led to internal divisions and conflicts with other blood factions. Also known as the Mac Baller family, their primary base is in the Morrisania area of the Bronx. Yet, their influence extends citywide, notably into Brooklyn and Staten Island, as well as regions beyond, including upstate New York and New Jersey. At the helm of the group stands Larry O. Calderon, a 37-year-old Bronx native with a criminal history, having spent a combined 17 years in state prison over two separate terms. Currently, he faces a life sentence for the alleged murder of a lower-ranking soldier. Within the Mac Baller Brims, he's often referred to as the Godfather or Don. Alongside him, his chief lieutenant, Eli Blood Eli Rios, 38, who is serving a life sentence for a separate homicide, holds significant influence. Together, they maintain a comprehensive presence in both state and city correctional facilities, spearheading a commission reminiscent of mafia hierarchies. This governing body oversees internal decisions, including authorizing acts of violence against adversaries and those perceived as disloyal, as per insights from a lead investigator on the GAN. A law enforcement insider described them as the undisputed leaders in the city. They noted their numbers surpass any other Blitz faction. Their hallmark traits are their high level of organization, sheer brutality, and immense power. Their reputation is such that other gangs tread lightly around. 
Official records indicate a membership of over 525, but the true figure is believed to be significantly higher. The Macballers have also distanced themselves from the New York Brim Alliance, an association of several related factions. The gang structure is bifurcated, with distinct divisions for financial operations and enforcement, known as the Money and Murder Units, respectively. In summary, the intricate web of Blitz gangs in New York, from the foundational UBN to the notorious Mac Baller Brims and the 183 Gangster Blitz, paints a vivid picture of the complex gang landscape in the city. These factions, each with its unique origin and modus operandi, have played significant roles in the tapestry of organized street crime on the East Coast. While law enforcement continuously grapples with their influence, the history and inner workings of these gangs offer profound insights into the challenges and dynamics of urban gangs. As the city evolves, so too will the stories of these factions, emphasizing the importance of understanding their past to shape a safer future for New York.